to move it around and change the position of your selector, um, we need a, a way to um, you just change the select x and select y index values. So uh, what we're going to do is end up creating a selection sub for this. So I'll just scroll down here. Um, I don't care if you put it before or after load items, but I'm going to say private sub select item. And we're going to have to know what direction uh, to select in or what direction to move it and change those values accordingly. So I'm going to do dir as a single and then inside of here I'm going to select case on that direction. So if the direction is zero then uh, we'll select up. If it's one, we'll select down. If it's two, we'll select left. And if it's three, we'll select right. So we'll say um, case zero. You can uh, mark those if you uh, don't want to accidentally forget what they are. And we'll say uh, to move up. Well, up is on the y axis. So what we'll do is uh, decrement the y value. But if it's zero already, we don't want to go to negative one, or we'll go outside of bounds, uh, the array bounds. So what we will want to do is cycle to the next highest value, or the, the highest value in the menu. So it'll kind of give it a nice looping effect. So what we'll do is we will say if select y, not x, y, um, is greater than zero, then select y minus equals 1. That decrements the value. So otherwise, if uh, you're already on the 0 position, then let's just uh, automatically send it to the highest position to make it loop. So say select y equals, well, what is the highest position? That would be uh, menu y which in our case is 1, so it goes from 0 to 1. Um, so we need to just uh, fill these in for each direction. We're going to say case 1, case 2, case 3, and we can say down, left, and right selectors. And this is just going to be uh, pretty much copying and inverting the value. So I'm going to grab this guy here. And I'm going to say, in this case, uh, instead of if select y is 0, I'm going to say if select y is less than the maximum menu y, then add 1 instead of subtracting. Otherwise, set it to the bottom value to make it loop the other direction. So we'll set it to zero. It's pretty simple. And for left and right, we're going to do the exact same things on uh, the x-axis. So we'll say if uh, select x is greater than zero, then select x minus equals one, else select x is menu x and same thing for the right except we will grab the positives here so we don't have to retype all those if select x is less than menu x then select x plus equals one otherwise select x equals zero and that's really all we have to do for our uh, item selector to change the direction. Okay, now we need some sort of uh, input handling to actually execute this uh, item selection. So um, let's just uh, 
go up here right below our new sub. I just kind of like to keep my new subs on top. And I'm going to add a public. This is going to override uh, the base screen sub handle input. So I'm going to say public overrides sub input, or sorry, handle input. And uh, we can get rid of my base handle input. So um, for each direction, all we're going to have to do is say if input that key pressed uh, is, uh, for example, W, then uh, select item. And what direction do we want to select? Well, if it's W, we want to select upward, so that is going to be our zero. And we'll just repeat these um, for each direction. Now our up value was one, so we'll say if keys, I'm sorry, our down value, S, I like using the WASD. You can also use your arrow keys, don't forget. A lot of people like to do that. Um, uh, a is generally left, so that will be two. And this will be three for right, and that will be my D key. So let's test this and make sure we got the order right on these. I am going to hit my I button. That invokes my menu. And if we did this properly, I should be able to move my selector around. Check that out. And you notice if I keep going left, it cycles to the far side, as we had hoped. Uh, same for up and down, right to left, left to right. Beautiful, it's working great. Um, some other inputs we might want to manage. Uh, what if the user presses escape? That's always a nice way to get out of menus, I think. So I'm going to say if uh, input dot key pressed uh, keys escape then uh, what we'll do is we will just unload the screen. We'll dump it. So, so we'll um, invoke the uh, unload screen method from our screen manager. And I'm going to reference the class by its own name. So I don't have to retype that. And that just references this guy right here. So it searches the uh, screen manager for the name of this class and should unload it if I press escape. So we'll go ahead and test that. Press I to bring it up and I press escape and boom it's gone and the uh, input is handed back to the world screen so we can move again. Excellent. Um, you know what? I'm just thinking we could probably drag this pull this up to one line so we don't have to have that if and if. It's always nice. Compress things down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this guy too because I think it's nice when you can also hit um, the same inventory button to close it. So now we should be able to press I as well and it'll close it. Um, tile uh, Active selection. So, you know, we have an active selection. What happens if we uh, press the enter key and actually activate it? Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is um, fire a class that you probably haven't seen in previous tutorials here, but I've added, uh, and that's my NPC uh, dialog this guy right here and it's just going to draw a dialog um, box or essentially a, a chat window or a text window at the top of the screen uh, with the given text that I choose the dialog text whoops I did not mean to do that 
So it creates a new dialogue uh, using whatever text I specify, and that's kind of fun.